This video is for those of you out there who are planning to go to China to study traditional Chinese martial arts at the Kunyushan um, Shaolin Martial Arts Academy. I trained at Kunyushan for one year, this most recent time that I was in China, and I gave the school permission to give out my information so that if there were students who were thinking of going to Kunyushan that had questions, whether it was about the training or the food or the living conditions, that they would be able to contact me and that way they could talk to someone who had been there and who had trained. Well, I started noticing that over the years, I've gotten a lot of emails and the same questions keep coming up over and over. So I thought it would be a little bit easier rather than writing a new email um, to everyone that writes me that has these questions, that I make a couple of videos so that those of you who are planning to go, hopefully these videos will answer those questions for you. And then of course, if you have further questions, you can feel free to contact me with those. Um, but hopefully these videos will take care of that. In this video, we're gonna focus on the clothing that you need to bring with you when you're going to Kunyushan. So I was there for a year, which means I had to plan for all the seasons. Um, obviously, it depends on when you're going as to what you need to bring. But know for sure that the winters get very cold and the summers get very hot. So if you're gonna be there over the summer, be sure that you bring a lot of cool clothing that you can train in. So one of the things that people would do that I noticed uh, while I was there is they would bring clothing like they were on vacation, but they didn't bring training clothes. So the good clothes that they wore that they liked wearing during downtime, they would end up messing up during training because when you're training, things get dirty, they get ripped, they get messed up a little bit because you're working hard and that's what happens to clothes when you're training hard. So be sure that you bring training clothes, specifically for training that you don't mind if they get a little bit dirty, you don't mind if they get a little bit messed up. And then I recommend that you would bring some clothes that you have for like your downtime. So on your weekends, if you're wanting to go into town, bring some clothes that are your fashionable clothes that you, you know, would want to wear out and about and have them separate from your training clothes. For the summer, make sure that your clothes that you bring for training are very lightweight and very cool. So you wanna bring shorts that you can train in like running shorts or basketball shorts, something that is made for athletic um, activities. Don't bring denim shorts for the training. That is totally a bad idea. And if you do it, you'll see why. Um, definitely keep those denim things for your in-town types of activities. Um, bring lots of t-shirts in the summer. If you like wearing a dry shirt, it gets really hot and you'll be changing your clothes a lot. You'll be changing your shirt a lot if you want to try to keep a dry shirt on because it's hot and um, at least while I was there in China, there wasn't much in the way of air conditioning pretty much anywhere. So if you're used to having a hot summer outside, nice air conditioned rooms inside your house, you're gonna give that up when you go to China. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but definitely bring clothes that are suited for that and bring enough clothes that if you're picky and you like to be in a dry shirt, you can change it several times a day because you definitely won't make it through a training period without sweating a lot. If you're gonna be there during the winter months or the cooler parts of the year, be sure that you have warm clothes set aside just for the training. Just like I was saying before, have your warm clothes for training and your warm clothes for in town. Um, I would recommend bringing at least one sweatshirt, maybe two that you don't mind training in, so if they get messed up, it's not a problem, they'll get sweaty and gross, that's okay, they're for training, and bring at least one heavy jacket because it does snow during the winter and Part of the training, part of the warm up is when it's snowy in the winter to get to the training hall, you know, that sometimes there's several feet of snow on the ground. So the students and the teachers will get out and shovel the snow together and get it out of the way so we can get to the training hall. Well, you don't want to do that in the clothes that you plan to go to town in. So make sure that you have, you know, very warm clothes, warm gloves, warm snow boots that you can wear while you're shoveling snow and making a path to the training hall. And when you're training in the winter, this kind of goes without saying, but try to dress in layers. You want your heaviest stuff on the outside and go lighter on the way in. Usually after the warm-ups, you'll be warm enough that you'll be able to train either a light long sleeve shirt or a t-shirt for the majority of the training period. And then in between, you'll want to bundle back up because you'll be sweaty and it'll be cold and you don't want to let your core temperature drop. So also bring plenty of clothes so you can change. If you get pretty sweaty during a, a training period, you'll be able to change into something dry before the next training period so your core temperature can stay up and so you don't get super cold. They do obviously heat the rooms and they heat the training halls, but with how cold it gets, sometimes the heating isn't quite enough to keep them you know, really comfortable. 
So just be prepared for the cold weather, be prepared to change your clothes a lot to keep your core temperature up, and be prepared to have your, your cold weather gross clothes that are for training and shoveling snow, and have your cold weather good clothes for when you go into town. Now when it comes to training clothes, there's lots of things that you can take for this. I'm gonna tell you what I took and how I did it, and it seemed to work well for me, and then obviously you can make your own choices on that. But what I did was I bought about three pair of really like strong heavyweight kung fu training pants, and I just ordered the, the all cotton Shaolin kung fu pants from WLE.com. Those are the ones that I used, they lasted really well. I was able to use three pair and make it through an entire year. So they're pretty sturdy. Um, I wore those also in the summer, so it wasn't just the winter months that I was wearing those pants. I wore them a lot in the summer also. So they are very sturdy pants and they will last you. Obviously if you wanted to get like some karate training pants or something like that, probably go with the black ones because the white ones will not stay white for long while you're training over there. But if you're going to be there for a year, I would recommend anywhere from three to four pairs of the Kung Fu training pants. Obviously you want about the same number of training shorts for the summer months if you'll be there a year. The reason I stress bringing training pants with you is because when you're over there, you can buy pants from tailors, but they're generally pants that are meant to look good, not to be trained in. So if you don't bring your own training pants, you're kind of stuck. They don't have a lot of really good options for training pants available over there, which I was really surprised with. I looked all over the place in town, I looked all over the place in the city, and I found some places where they had kung fu uniforms, but they weren't really like heavy uh, material. They were pretty lightweight and they were usually more for demonstrations than actual training. So you'll want to make sure that you bring clothes that are um, heavyweight and strong enough that they'll be able to make it through the training and don't depend on the clothes that you get over there that are more for demonstrations. For the upper half, I took a bunch of t-shirts. I basically went to a store when they were on sale and I bought a ton of different t-shirts that I didn't care about. If something happened to them, big deal. They cost like a dollar a piece or something like that. And I wore those during the summer and during the winter, I'd put those on, then I would put, you know, like a long sleeve shirt, then I would put um, like a sweater, and then I'd put my jacket on, and then I could layer back down as I got warm and then bundle back up as I got cold. So I took probably, I don't know, maybe 15 t-shirts or so that were just for training, not counting the ones that I would wear um, otherwise during like the weekends and stuff. I took probably five to six warm long sleeve shirts that I could wear under a sweatshirt for the colder, colder days when the t-shirt wouldn't be enough underneath everything. And then I took one sweatshirt that I would wear, you know, for not training. I took two that I would wear for training, so as they got dirty and gross, I could have a backup. And I made the mistake of taking only one jacket. So I had one jacket that I wore to training and to shoveling snow and then when I wanted to go into town I had that same jacket so that jacket got kind of gross and it wasn't really a fun thing to wear into town around other people but um, that's kind of how it went and that's why I recommend that you take one for training time and one for in town time. There are washing machines available at the school so you're able to do your laundry on the weekends and after the clothes are washed they hang out on a clothesline so just make sure that you bring enough clothing that you can make it through a week and then do your washing on the weekends. Usually that's the best way to do it. During the week to try to do laundry in between training sessions would be kind of a pain. I never tried to do that, but I'm sure there were some students who did do that. I just couldn't see how that would be a, a really great idea, so I avoided that. The next most important thing to think about is what you're gonna be wearing on your feet. So I already mentioned boots for winter. Make sure that you have really good warm boots so that when you're out shoveling snow, your toes don't go numb. You wanna make sure you keep your feet warm. The next thing that you want to make sure you have is running shoes and like really good running shoes. It's not a bad idea to take two pair with you, especially if you're staying for a year. Uh, when I went, I had a pair that I had already been training in, so I took those and I bought a brand new pair and I just kept them in my suitcase under my bed. And that way when the first pair wore out, I didn't have to try to find another pair of good training shoes over there. I just had a backup pair that I knew were good quality. In China, it can be difficult to find really good quality running shoes, at least in my experience it was. So to me, it made more sense to buy a pair at home where I knew what the quality was and bring those with me than to try to buy a pair over there where I wasn't sure if they were actually Nikes or if they were knockoffs or if they were actually Reebok or knockoff, you know, whatever brand it is that you like running in. It's better to buy them at home where you know they're actually that brand and they aren't a counterfeit brand that won't offer the same support when you're running. The reason it's so important to have good running shoes is because you're going to be running a lot. 
So if you haven't started running now and you're going to be going soon, start running because you run before just about every class as your warm up. And then on Fridays, you do what's called the mountain run. And you basically run up and down a mountain four to six times depending on who your instructor is and how long you've been there. And that is a lot of work. So if you have bleachers or stairs or anything that you can run up and down a lot, do that as much as you can before you get there and that will help a lot on your mountain run. When you get there, you can worry about getting shoes for your actual in-class training. So you run before the class, then you have your actual you know, training session where you're either doing Shaolin Kung Fu or Tai Chi or um, Baji or Wing Chun, depending on the, the group that you go into. Um, but the same training shoes are good for all of those groups. So the shoes that they have available are called Feiyue shoes, and you can get them online, probably anywhere in the world, but they basically look like this. And the reason you want to use these for your training is because, one, they're flexible. They're nice and cushy on the inside. They have a canvas top. They last pretty well. Like, they don't fall apart easily. And on top of that, this canvas top doesn't get in the way. And they're really low to the ground, so if you're going into a low stance, you don't have the shoe that's pushing up, trying to support your foot and keep it straight up and down, and you're trying to go into a low stance. So I saw a lot of people try to run in their running shoes and train in their running shoes, and it always messed with their form and their ability to um, actually do the movements the way that they should when they had those running shoes that were pushing their feet forward and were very rigid to try to keep them stable. It was always much better to train in actual training shoes. So worry about bringing the running shoes, and when you get there, you can buy the training shoes for really inexpensive from the school. So that won't be a big deal. So those are all the tips that I have, at least right now, as far as clothing goes for when you're traveling to Kunyu Shan. Stay tuned for more videos that will be discussing more areas of common questions for students who are planning to go to Kunyu Shan. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great time at Kunyu Shan.